So I thought I'd make a bit of a contribution to this whole change on 90 millimeter blade investigation. Not too many people would have a scale capable of measuring to the uh, hundredth of a gram. So what you see here is the scale I used as well as two columns of blades and a third column set apart. Plus at the top right hand corner of that page you see a five gram calibration weight. I'm sure it's not NIST traceable but good enough for our purposes. So what you can see is that there are two groupings that are significant. A 2.91 to 2.92 gram grouping of blades on the left side. A 3 to 3.05 gram grouping of blades to the right. And then one which is super light at 2.86. So I'll just uh, take a representative sampling of a couple blades to show what's going on here. But the essence is that you can see, put these blades together, you're going to have an unbalanced fan. There's also another piece of the story too, and that is the quality of the blades. And you'll see as the video progresses that uh, some have a distinctly superior quality to others. And they do seem to be linked to the groupings, roughly linked to the groupings. So I'll just do a couple of measurements so you can see what's going on here. First, the calibration weight itself. So I consistently get 5.01 to 5.02 grams on this, plus or minus about one hundredth of a gram, I guess, fair to say. So 5.03. I'll take my light blade next. I'm expecting 2.86. I get 2.88. It's warmed up a little bit since a 2.87. It's warmed up a bit since a bit since I started this test. So who knows? There could be some thermal drift. And then in this column here, they start at three grams and work their way up to the last item here, being 3.05 grams. Three grams. Pick one in the middle here. <clears throat> I'm expecting 3.02 in this one. And in this one I'm expecting 3.05 grams. It's super sensitive. Like if I just if I just blow a bit of air on it like that with my hand, you can see how it goes crazy, right? So it's super sensitive, but uh, I guess I'm getting 3.04 this time around. And then over here, 2.91 I'm expecting for this particular blade. Pick one in the middle, also 2.91. end here 2.92 so I'm expecting okay so you're getting a feel in essence for how these blades stack up 2.91 to 2.92 is this grouping 3 to 3.05 is this grouping and then one oddball at 2.86 let's just come back to the calibration weight we had 5.03 if I remember before Yeah, so 5.02. So whatever drift occurred on my scale, it's only affected things to about a hundredth of a gram. So the next issue is quality of blades. Now I'll pick this one here as a good example. So this blade here, let's see if I can get the camera to focus properly on it. I use this as a good example of a blade. Note in particular the trailing edge, right? So you can see the trailing edge here, the cambered side of the trailing edge. A little bit of an aberration at the very back of the trailing edge, towards the tip in particular, you can see it, right? A little bit there. 
But in essence, I would call this a well-molded blade. This one here beside it, though, isn't. So it's from the uh, lighter group. Can you see the aberration that I'm referring to here? Try to do this without bumping anything. Right along here. And on the other side, again, you can see the aberration. Now all the blades in this grouping have somewhat of an aberration. Just picking them at random here, but they have somewhat of that kind of an aberration. You can see it again here. And you can see it again here. And again, if I pick blade number two from this grouping, somewhat of an aberration here on this side, and on this, but less than in the other grouping. So to be fair, all of the blades seem to have a little bit of that kind of deviation from the perfect airfoil at the trailing edge. But clearly, this grouping here is, I don't know, 25%, 50%, somewhere around there, superior to this grouping here for the molding itself. And I'll just pick up the lightest blade of all. And you'll see that it's not perfect by any means either. Right? So it's not simply uh, lighter is better. Anyway, this is a, a fan that I picked up from Hobby King last month, being the month of June. And uh, my opinion is I'm going to hold off and I'm not going to fly it until I know more about what's going on with the uh, quality of these blades. I only intend to run it at 2, 2.2 kilowatts, no more. Um, but even so, I don't want to have, this is a scratch belt plane I'll be putting into. And uh, it's not the money, it's the incredible amounts of time to scratch belt something that I don't want to lose if this fan should break up in the air. So, hopefully this video uh, serves some purpose anyway for sleuthing out what's going on with our crazy fans.